Thanks once again for joining us on Housing Development Program this week. I'm your host as usual, Nomsu Thoma. This is where we discuss issues regarding affordable housing in Nigeria and a lot of other housing related matters. Let me start by asking you, have you registered for the 13th Abuja International Housing Show? For those of you who have registered, we have received your forms. And for those who are to exhibit at the show, if you haven't sent your profile and bio, please do so for it to be included in the brochure for the event. For those yet to register you can still be at the event just that you'll be asked to register your name as a visitor at the venue it is no doubt an opportunity for you to make sales network exhibit and fulfill your dreams for more on how you can participate in the show we have details on our lineup for you this week on the program it will continue with a discourse on affordable housing we can't stop talking about it until we get it right also on the show this week, we have news on experts' review of 2012 National Urban Development Policy organized by the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. And then we shall look at the issue of estate infrastructure, whose duty it is to build access roads to estates. After the news, we will have a housing stakeholder, Mr. Babajide Odusholu, as our guest as we continue with our discourse on achieving affordable housing in Nigeria. Do stay tuned for the news. Organizers of the 13th Abuja International Housing Show slated for 23rd to 26th July says international housing expert Deborah Epp of the Overseas Private Investment Corporation USA will lead a delegation of international investors and experts to Nigeria. The show is set to bring together international experts in housing and construction to share their experience and knowledge on the best way to finance affordable housing, mortgage and construction. Also, over 30 speakers from at least 15 countries will be speaking at this year's event with its team tagged Driving Sustainable Housing Finance Models in the Midst of Global Uncertainty. Away from that, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, has given two weeks ultimatum to residents of Ipent 5 Estate in Lokogoma District, Abuja Municipal Area Council, AMAC, whose buildings are along waterways and road corridors to vacate the areas. Recall that barely a few weeks ago, the waterways along Lokogoma Corridor were heavily flooded and swept away several houses, including a young boy of 17 years after a heavy downpour. Handing down the ultimatum during an unscheduled visit to the estate, the Federal Capital Territory FCT Permanent Secretary Chinyaka Oha reveals the building were built without approval from the administration, therefore explains that the buildings will be removed by the administration after the ultimatum. Finally, on the foreign scene, hip-hop icon Queen Latifah has placed on her developer hat and is set to return to her hometown, Newark, to build a new affordable housing complex. Latifah is a co-president of Blue Sugar Corporation, which has partnered with Gonsonsa Development on the project. According to published reports, the $14 million project is expected to break ground this summer along Springfield Avenue and South 17th. A spokesperson for the developers, Kristen Pizon, says Blue Sugar and GS developers share the belief that decent affordable housing should be available to everyone regardless of their financial situation. Welcome back. That was the news with Chinelo Uzawuru right there. For more, you can visit our website at www.housingnews.org.ng. Also remember, the 13th Abuja International Housing Show app is now on Google Play Store. All you have to do is search for it, click on the download button, and you have access to all you need to know about the show. Now we will continue our discussion on affordable housing. And according to our guest on the show today, until we get to that point where someone earning about 150,000 naira can afford to own a home. We would not stop talking about solutions. Let's hear Mr. Babajide Odusholu as he speaks. To be more specific, when you talk about the problems of affordable housing in Nigeria, you've got the first one, consumers themselves, a mismatch of expectation and ability. Okay? Then two, 
you've got the developers themselves. Um, to be a developer is not the fact that you have some money in your bank account, or your uncle happens to have land somewhere, or you happen to be a graduate of any of the build industry disciplines. To be a developer is understanding that alchemy of need meeting uh, opportunity, meeting specifics of what people would like to have. So there's that problem with supply, the inability, inexperience, or lack of proper understanding by the developers. Okay, and of course, then there's a third is a bureaucratic or what I call society, societal challenges. I don't want to use the word government, uh, societal challenges. These things are what has created a problem where it is literally almost impossible to deliver affordable housing in Nigeria. We had Shagari housing program, the most successful one that we've ever had in Nigeria, right? You had the 1004 developed by government. You had first stack developed by government. You had Jack on the housing. Ineffective, inelegant, um, had challenges, but these were housing products that met a need. You see, the first problem we have is we need to go vertical. And that's one of the things that we've realized and we're not pushing. That if you do not go vertical, you cannot get the scale you need. What I mean by vertical, I mean you cannot effectively house people when everybody is building a duplex. Land is a finite resource. Infrastructure cost increase the larger the land size is. So in order for you to be able to deliver affordable housing, you've got to keep your infrastructure cost at a minimum. You've got to find a way of spreading your development cost on a smaller landscape, okay? And then you've got to be able to bring more people it's that development. So to put in perspective for you, if I take a plot of land, whether it is in Abuja or in Lagos or in Ilorin or in Ibadan or wherever, if I take a plot of land and I develop that plot of land and I go vertical, I can put more people in it. Now, one of the things that people typically say is that culturally Nigerians don't like living in apartments. I don't think that's true. I think it's that mindset of, oh, if it is not my own house, it will not be well serviced. That causes a problem. If you look at 1004 in Lagos, for example, it was successful. We've got apartments in Abuja that were successful. Something was done right. And that's what we've got to keep replicating. Look, we are not an island. So it is not that people don't want to live in apartments. It is what type of apartments are you building for them? Welcome back to the program. That was Mr. Babajide Odusholu, Group CEO, Legacy Holdings Limited. The issue of affordable housing will take the front burner at the 13th Abuja International Housing Show. Are you into housing finance or a developer that is in need of funding for your project? Deborah Epp, Managing Director of Housing Programs for the Overseas Private Investment Cooperation, will be leading a team of international housing finance experts and investors to the CEO Forum of Abuja International Housing Show. You still have an opportunity to register for the CEO Forum. Now moving on, on the 26th of June marks the beginning of a three-day workshop of experts on the review of the 2012 National Urban Development Policy organized by the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. Let's take a look at how it unfolded. The Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing on the 26th of June organized a three-day workshop of experts on the review of 2012 National Urban Development Policy in Abuja. In most cities in Nigeria, residents are faced with conditions of poor housing, increased crime rates, poor infrastructure and increased growth rates of shanty towns, slums and ghettos. The government in the past has initiated a number of policies large to care of urban development. Among these policies is the National Urban Development Policy 2012. Speaking with housing development on the sidelines of the event, the National President Nigerian Institute of Town Planners, NITP, Town Planner Lekwa Azuta, says there is need to review the policy in line with current realities. He believes that the urban development policy facilitates the provision of affordable housing in Nigeria. The review of the policy is meant to aid, you know, because this is urban development policy. We have a housing policy. 
but houses are built on land. And urban development policy is talking about how do you organize land upon which you build the houses. So whatever we do is to ensure that the urban development policy helps or facilitates the provision of housing. On his part, Project Manager Urban Support Program Mina Niger State, Professor Mustafa Zuberu, says if the review is successively achieved, all the three tiers of government will be able to identify their responsibilities. If we get this review right, all the three tiers of government will have known exactly what their responsibilities are. And that is a basis we can begin to address core issues like housing. For example, you need a bit of long-term concessional funding. You need to be able to have access to land and so on and so forth. It is this policy that is supposed to provide a basis, in my view, for all that to be available, for houses to be provided for those who need, who need houses that are affordable and acceptable to people. It is important for the government to make serious effort in addressing the challenges of urban growth and development. Many policies are either made in isolation or without consideration of the country's constitution. This means that all stakeholders must play their part in harmonizing all the existing policies in order for the system to run efficiently. Thanks for staying with us on the program. Now, it is a well-known fact that a lot of estates in Nigeria today are built without proper access roads to them, especially in this wet season. A lot of estate residents find it difficult to access roads to their estates and homes due to bad roads which have been overcome by flooding. In this report, we decided to hear from some experts on whose responsibility it is to build access roads to estates. Take a listen. Infrastructure, which is the basic physical and organizational structure needed for the operation of a society, all the services and facilities required for an economy to function, is a major determinant of real estate investment. Many factors are responsible for the inadequate infrastructure provision in Nigeria, such as, but not limited to, poor funding, poor governance, corruption, economic sabotage, poor maintenance culture, population explosion, and neglect of urban and regional planning laws. A lot of estates are built in Nigeria without provision of adequate access roads to these estates, hence the residents go through a lot when it comes to movement in and out of their homes. Some developers do well to build good roads within their estate, but the roads leading to these estates are nothing to write home about. The question is, whose responsibility is it to provide access roads to estates? Speaking with housing development on the issue, this housing expert says asset roads are part of infrastructural development, hence that the function resides with the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. Access roads are part of uh, infrastructural development. And as of today, that function resides with the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, uh, as well as other uh, infrastructural requirements for urban development. And um, I would say that um, efforts are being made, but we are still to get to the position of comfort in the area of provision of infrastructure in Nigeria. Still speaking on the issue, this estate developer says the government might not have to provide infrastructure within the estate for the private developers, but it owes the citizens provision of basic infrastructures. It lies on the government basically to bring the major infrastructure. For instance, now, if I'm building an estate in a district where it's about 10 kilometers away from the major road, you don't expect me to have such an amount to. So the government can bring in the major road into such district. Then we tap that and provide uh, the feeder roads to our estates. That's what is uh, required. Infrastructure is important and necessary for developing areas. And in a country like Nigeria, where the provision of basic infrastructure is still an issue even in metropolitan areas, the government still has a lot of catching up to do. One of the most prominent features of your house is your roof. Your roof will tell how old your building is. At Plus World, we pride ourselves in having the expertise and products to bring your roof back to life. 
While other roofing companies suggest removing the roof, we restore the roof with warranty assurance. Let Plus World Roofing recoat your old and fading roofs and make your roofs brand new. Our products are eco-friendly and completely harmless to human and the environment. We offer services that will sustain your roof's integrity and by extension, your property value. This includes roof repairs and maintenance for residential, commercial and industrial properties. Our roof restoration solution saves you up to 70% the cost of replacing your roof. Contact Plus World Roofing today. Plus World Roofing. Why re-roof when you can restore? Welcome back to the program. Up next on Voice on the Street, we spoke to a few people to get their opinions on the issue of access roads to estates. Do take a look. Actually, it should be the responsibility of the estate owner. That is private estate. But I don't know how, why they collect people's monies, give them prototype, and yet won't provide access routes to the various houses in the estates. And I, I, I don't know if government have any policy on ground to checkmate all these kind of things. But it's not done, it's not proper anyway. He's the developer. He's the owner of the estate. And uh, one of the conditions you give to your people who are going to live in the estate is to give them good work and uh, other facilities. So basically, they are still going to pay as tenants. You understand? So it has nothing to do with the government. Because uh, private properties or developers, whatever, the estate is private. So access road, uh, amenities should come from the developer. I think uh, it's the government's responsibility, that's what I believe, because uh, maybe local government or state government may not be federal because that will be within town and all that. So, but it's government responsibility, yeah, they're supposed to provide in their original plans for estates or housing, they're supposed to provide access houses to every um, building or area. The developer has, um, has some measures of responsibility. I believe that I believe it just it should be just some meters after the estate. It shouldn't be the whole um, road. You understand? And that's what I think. program, Urban Shelter Limited, one of the foremost real estate development companies in Abuja with various housing estates with different locations in Nigeria, is still selling luxurious housing apartments with affordable and flexible payment plan. Here's a quick one from them. In Abuja alone now, we are working on the Apple Market in uh, Apple. We're working on Promenade in Local Goma. We're working on Saronia Estate in Libby. We're working on Urban Shelter Estate in Kiami. We're working on Bellevue 2 and 3 all at Life Camp. We're working on Brick City Views and Brick City Breeze as well. Those are two projects also in uh, in Koba region. So we are extensively heavily invested in Abuja, both in terms of output and in terms of actually giving value to clients and in terms of range of products as well. So this is everything from a studio flats all the way to five bedroom mansions. And in terms of pricing range, so you're looking at from 4 million Naira to 200 million Naira. So this tells you what's important for Urban Shelter isn't just creating houses, it's ensuring that everybody that comes through the door there's something that kind of meets their income status one of the things that really we hold very dear to us is urban shelter affordable homes we think that you know shelter is a basic human right and as much as we can we should be able to make that happen we've gone further not just looking at kind of the houses that we produce the real estate we produce but to say what kind of financial tools can we create and we've come up with a five-year plan so it's important for us i think to get hard-working nigerian people um, into homes so everything begins from not just the house it begins with even the location so it's important for instance that you don't have to 
to drive two hours from your house to your office. It's important you don't have to drive, you know, 90 minutes from your home to get to your children for, to school. It's important for us that you have typically what we call plug and play. So we're ensuring we provide road networks right up to your estate, ex external and internal. We're ensuring when you turn your taps on, the water is flowing. We're ensuring that so far as we can, there is power and all that is left is for the federal government to actually get that power to you. And in some estates, we also provide backup generators. We're ensuring that for life and health at balance, that there are recreational spaces that allows you to unwind during the weekend, that allows you to have a picnic, invite family, invite friends, because more and more now, I think, you know, the importance of de-stressing and relaxing at your home. Um, you know, one man's home is his castle, so it's important we try and really hit that note. Internally, of course, quality all the way. You can get a house at Urban Shelter Limited by calling the numbers displayed on your TV screen. that was urban shelter limited now july is here already and it is a countdown to the 13th abuja international housing show come 23rd of the month all roads will lead to the international conference center abuja a lot of people have registered some have not let me show you some of the people that have been invited for this year's show the Vice President Professor Yemi Ushibajo, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan, the Speaker House of Representatives Femi Gwajabi Amila, various state governors, Ministers of Works and Housing from Ghana and Kenya, all permanent secretaries, all commissioners for housing, all chief executives of housing related agencies, and so on. Here are some of the others expected at the show. <music> The 13th edition of the Abuja International Housing Show is drawing close. The show, which is the largest housing and construction show in Africa, promises to host a lot of key stakeholders in the sector. Some of the guest speakers expected at the event will include developer, residential and commercial real estate agent, mortgage and investment loan provider, insurance provider, home interiors expert, home appliances and electronics supplier, energy supplier and equipment provider. If you haven't registered for the Abuja International Housing Show, the time is now. Visit www.ahs2019.org for more information and to get registered.
is where we call it a wrap on housing development today you can catch up on all you missed on our youtube page at housing tv africa and you can follow us on facebook and twitter on at housing program to be a part of what we do don't forget to start counting down with me as we get our preparations towards the 13th abuja international housing show my name is namso thoma i'll see you soon